the biblical truth of our hymns. Today's hymn, What If It Were Today? By Leela Nayar Morris. And it's, a, it's a rapture hymn and it's a second advent hymn. American Methodist hymn writer. Old time Methodist. And she was married to Charles H. Morris. They were very active in the Methodist Episcopal Church and attended camp meetings in Mount Vernon, Ohio, uh, Sebring Camp in Ohio. In the 1890s, she began to write hymns and gospel songs. It has been said that she wrote more than a thousand songs. And she even wrote the tunes. And what's quite amazing is she done it, some of them, while she was doing her housework. A virtuous woman. Not only is she doing housework, but she's doing work for the Lord. And this may have been one sweep in the floor. Who knows? In 1913, her eyesight began to fail. Her son thereupon constructed for her a blackboard, 28 feet long, with oversized staff lines, so she could continue to compose. What a wonderful thing! What a wonderful gifts that God's given us to be able to do what he wants done. Again, and I couldn't find any really history about why or where she wrote this, but Second Advent. Now, there's some things we got to look at in the hymn itself, but the music, if you remember the music for this hymn, she wrote it. And the music is the, the tune to, to the to the hymn is second coming. Can't miss the point there, can we? Now, remember, a hymn though is not the Bible. A hymn though is not inspired by God. And you're going to find some faults in hymn though. And a minor one that we have here, but let's look at Jesus is coming to earth again. What if it were today? Amen. What if he came before I even finished this? Glory to God. What if Jesus Christ interrupted our plans? Our outings? Our activity? What if Jesus Christ had something better for us? I, I think when the rapture does happen, those that are alive, I believe some of them will be upset that the, Jesus came. He interrupted their life, but now it says, Jesus is coming to the earth again. Now I want to look at two pieces of scripture here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, dead, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. If a Christian dies, you can miss them, but they got hope. They're absent from the body and present with the Lord. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and I do, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Resurrection. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Put in a body in a coffin and in a, a, a concrete casement. That is not going to stop that body from coming out of the grave. Put six feet of dirt on that on that person. It ain't going to stop you. For the Lord Himself shall descend with a shout, uh, descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. That's clouds. That's in the air. You've seen clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. The rapture. Is when the Christians both dead and alive. Are caught up together in the clouds. And from the clouds to heaven we meet Jesus. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. I'm using my electronic Bible here. Revelation 19. And verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. 
And he that sat upon it was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. First, uh, uh, John chapter 1, verse 1. That's Jesus. And the armies which, which are in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that which he should smite the nation, and shall rule them with a rod of iron, and treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. He had a best, and he hath on his vesture and on his side a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I saw the angel standing in the sun and cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls of that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, free, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse against the army. All right, let's make one conclusion fact here. Jesus coming to the earth again, that is the second advent. That is not the rapture of the church. When Jesus comes for his bride at the rapture, he comes nowhere near the earth. He's in the air. When the angry lion of the tribe of Judah comes with fierceness, comes to take his throne and touches the earth. That is the second advent. That is after Jacob's trouble. That's after seven years of tribulation period. Because he says Jesus is coming to the earth again. To the earth. What if it were today? For the Christian. We're going to be behind them, Revelation 19 said. The saints that were riding upon the white mules. It's going to be a shock to the earth, but it ain't going to be a shock to the church. Because we've already been caught up. Coming in power, that's second advent. And love to reign. But he's coming to reign to take the seat of David's throne. The love of the children of Israel. But for the nations that rejected him, for the nations that hate God, and for the nations that has not done good to Israel, they're going to be the goat nations. They're going to be the nations that he's going to come back and they're going to cast them off into the lake of fire, the goat nations. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And the remnant of the Jewish people, he's going to gather up, probably from Salem Petra, and bring them into the promised land like Joshua did. Joshua means Jehovah saves, Jesus meaning Jehovah saves. And Joshua divided the land among the children of Israel, and Jesus is going to divide the land among the children of Israel. What if it were today? Well, now here's we have problem. Today is not going to be the second advent. You're going to have seven years of tribulation. You're going to have to rapture your church before the tribulation. Great thing about the second coming, but it's wrong. I read to you 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're going to meet him in the air, not in the earth. I hate to bust your bubble, but we got to look at the biblical truth. Coming to claim his chosen bride. That is rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 4. That's not coming to touch the earth. Revelation 19. Two, event, two different events. I hate to burst the bubble, but all the redeemed and purified over this horror. Yeah, the rapture, but not coming to the earth. This hymn needs to be tweaked. Scattered wide. What if it were today? What if it were today for the rapture? Amen. Glory to God. But. You can almost date the second advent. As soon as the tribulation period starts. Seven years. Seven years. 
Satan's domain will there be or O what if it were today? Satan is not losing his domain when the rapture happens. Satan is going to get seven years of the tribulation period. Three and a half years of great tribulation period. Satan is going to rule the tribulation period as the Antichrist. Now the second advent is where Jesus will take the devil to Satan and bound him and cast him into a thousand years into a prison. Chained. At the end of those thousand years, he's going to be loose. He's going to gather an army. God, you're done. Then heaven and earth will, will flee away and then a great white throne of judgment. At the second advent, Satan is put away for a thousand years. We know when that's going to happen. Now, I'm not giving a date. I'm not saying uh, July 18, you know, no. I'm saying we know the time because after the seven-year period of Jacob's trouble, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to mount up. He's coming back to the earth. He's coming back as the King of kings, Lord of lords. He's going to gather the nations between sheep and goats. The goats go up in the lake of fire, and Satan is bound and locked up for a thousand years. That does not happen at the rapture. Matter of fact, woe be to the people after the rapture that is here on the earth, because you're going to have the time of Jacob's trouble. You're going to have events the Bible describes that never, ever happened on this earth before. Satan is going to have complete dominion and reign, and he's going to be able to do his magic tricks before Christians. Sorrow and sighing shall be no more. When the Christians go up in the, in the, in the, uh, the rapture. But, let's see if I can find this real quick. Check in here. All right, in Revelation 21, verse 4, after the rapture, after the seven years tribulation period, after the millennium, after the great white throne judgment, after the heavens, the new heavens, the new earth, and new Jerusalem come, Revelation 21, 4, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, amen, no, neither sorrow, amen, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, oh, glory to God. For the former things are passed away. Uh, Mrs. Morris, I love the intention you put in this hymn, but you're dead wrong. Christians will be crying at the judgment seat of Christ for what they lost. Christians are going to be in tears when they see family and loved ones being cast off the lake of fire forever. That sorrow, those tears, does not happen into Revelation 21. I don't want to burst your bubble, but we got to look at the scriptures, and I got to say that this hymn, what if it were today? It's not scriptural. I personally would not include it. I would not sing it. You've got the second advent, amen, glory to God, and you got the rapture mixed up together. They are not the same. The Bible says they're not the same. One event the Lord comes in the air, another event the Lord comes to the clouds. And when I mean comes to the earth, and when he comes to the earth, the bride is already behind him. Sorrow and sign shall be no more. Oh they were today. The rapture? Oh man, amen. Glory to God for happened today. But the sorrow and all that doesn't doesn't end to, to Revelation 21. Now look at the scripture. Imagine a church having these hymns and the pastor is not studied. Would hay or stubble? The Bible says, study and show thyself a food unto God, and what man needs not to be ashamed by the divine word of the truth. Imagine God telling a, a saved preacher, Christian, a pastor of a church, saying the judgment seat of Christ, if you only study, now you're ashamed. 
You got trouble when it comes to him. You got many troubles. Satan is a Satan is the choir director in heaven before he fell. Satan knows what to do with the hymns. He knows what to do with the music. He knows how to change the word of God. You've got the modern Bible in the hymns today. Then shall the dead in Christ arise. That is the rapture. That does not have the earth, the Lord touching the earth. He's in the air when the Christians go. I read that first Thessalonians 4. Caught up to meet him in the skies. When shall these glories meet our eyes? What if it were today? Amen. Glory to what if the rapture did happen today? Glory to God. We're, don't look for the rapture to happen when. Don't look for Jesus to touch the earth. Don't look for him. He's in the skies. We're going to meet in the clouds. You do not want to meet Jesus touching the earth if you're here on this earth. That is the wrath of God. That is the angry Savior. Faithful and true would he find us here if he should come today. Oh, she hasn't read the last scene church age. She has not read about the, the last period of the church age. Shall I read it to you? Got to get with scripture, don't we? I probably ruined you, but scripture. Unto the angel of the church of the lad to see is the last church age. The church age we're in before the Lord comes. These things say the amen and the faithful and the true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. But so then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You make God sick. That's today's church age. Because thou sayest, I am rich. This is the church. Increase with good. Have need of nothing. And know it's not. This is what God says about today's church age. Thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And goes on to say, he stands at the door of the church and knocks. Any man that will come out, he will suck. Quite interesting. I don't know how much faith, I mean, there's going to be faithfulness, but I don't think you're going to find much faithfulness when the rapture of the church happens. Again, you got the rapture. Jesus comes in the air and takes his bride away. Does not come to the earth. You got the tribulation period. He comes to the earth with the bride behind him. Watching in gladness and not in fear. What if it were to come today? Amen. Glory to God. Watch for the Lord. Be happy that the Lord is going to call us home. Be happy that one day the rapture is going to... Whether you die or you're alive, the rapture is coming. If you die, you're just going to come out of the grave. If you're alive, you're just going to go wherever you were. Signs of His coming multiply. Morning. Light break. In eastern sky, second advent, that's not the rapture. Watch for the, watch for the time it is drawing nigh. Yep, yeah, watch, amen. What if it were today? So the problem with this hymn, she's got the rapture and the second advent twisted together. And between the rapture and the second advent, you've got a period called the tribulation period. Seven years of Jacob's trouble. And you cannot confuse the two. I mean, if you were to take this hymn and put it as it is right now, the church is going to go through the tribulation period. And sometimes the tribulation period, when the Lord comes back, that's when he's going to call his church away. And that's a Pharisee. That's a, that's a lie. That's not true. That's a dispensation trouble. The church does not go through Jacob's trouble be a big lie glory glory joy in my heart will bring glory glory when we should when we shall yeah, when we shall crown him king amen revelation 19 not first Thessalonians 4 glory glory haste to prepare the way glory glory Jesus will come someday amen glory to God the first trip in the air for the Christians the second trip with the Christians behind him 
and the lion, the tribe of Judah. He ain't coming back to that land no more. He's not coming as that man who's going to suffer and die on the cross. He's coming back in anger. So I, I wouldn't include this. I'm sorry. It's scripturally wrong. And I mean, the references Matthew 24 44, 25 13, Mark 13 37. Acts 1 11. But she has confused the rapture and the second advent together. And that's a heresy. And that's where many religions have fallen. The church goes before the tribulation period. That is the rapture. Jesus meets us in the air. He doesn't come to get us on the earth. We leave the earth. At the end of the period of seven years, Jesus comes with the church behind him. And then he touches the earth for the nation of Israel to be set up on David's throne forever. 